What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Market Misfits. We're looking at the XRP weekly chart and the sediment we're going to be covering today on the call. So the sediment right now is horrible for XRP. In fact, I don't think it could get any worse. Chance that this is the optimal time to buy. I'm not saying to buy. None of this is financial advice. It's just for educational purposes only. We're not responsible for profits or losses. But generally speaking, when sediment is horrible on a project or in cryptos, we're going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart and we're going to see when the when the crypto market started to take off and go over some of the sediment that was happening then and relate it over here to XRP. But first, let's take a look at the coin market cap data to see how horrible XRP is performing in price. Here we are at the coin market cap and we are at a 89 in extreme greed. So this is we haven't been this high in forever, you guys. So just FYI, this is a warning sign. So just because it says green. This should stand for I'm slowly cashing out, you know, and this is generally just for Bitcoin. There are a lot of altcoins that haven't pumped yet. So this isn't speaking for really each individual instrument, but this is speaking for mainly for Bitcoin and the market sediment. sediment yes, overall. But in this case, we're talking about XRP and here we are at XRP. We're down on the week and you can see all of its rivals are up. Bitcoin's up 10% on the week. Ethereum's up 14%. Even Tether is up. We have Binance is up almost 20%. And then we have Solana bolstering 14% on the week. And then we come down to XRP and we have this red, this red stuff. So, you know, the Bitcoin fear and greed index is used to gauge sediment, fear and greed in the market. So, you know, it's showing a very strong greed right now, extreme greed. And this is why, but it's not showing extreme greed for this. So just wanted to kind of highlight this. And so it, for XRP holders or people that are still bullish on XRP and understand how the dynamics work in the market, this is not a bad sign. This could flip and I have, we think that it's going to flip when people least expect it. And that's any day now because the sediment really, really, really sucks right now for XRP. Not saying that it's not going to continue to go down think it would maybe have a spring like a liquidation spring that would go down and you know clear the house before we go up but just as we saw with retail on xrp when the retail investors were cleared how the price skyrocketed up to a dollar and then started to sink was well, because the institutions are still not the institutions are still not clear we're going to cover a couple other um, a couple other things in this article today. Expert outlines factors that will make XRP succeed and propel in its price. So I completely agree with what this guy is saying here. And we are thinking with the same sediments. But he's going to give a couple of reasons why or what is going to happen, what he believes is going to happen here. So without any further ado, let's get into the article. We'll take a closer look at the charts. Renowned crypto author Panos Macross has outlined factors that he believes will contribute to XRP success and influence its market value. Diverging from the prevailing anticipation surrounding a potential lawsuit settlement and ETF listing. Macross, co-founder of Andos Finance, expressed this sentiment amid a wave of pessimism directed towards XRP. Famous, S famous crypto investigator Mr. Hubber called attention to this trend in a recent post on X. So here's the this is the campaign. XRP is dead campaign. We have it red, but let's turn this green because this is bullish. So generally speaking, again, not financial advice. When people, when when things are really negative like this, the general public and people that aren't as informed as how, how all this generally plays out. And again, we're just talking in probabilities, not saying this is for certain for XRP, but in general, you want to be buying the bad news and then selling when it hits mainstream. So anyways, but a XRP is dead campaign. Hubber observed a chorus of XRP is dead reverberating within the XRP community due to its lagging performance compared to its counterparts. For instance, XRP has increased 19% over the past 30 days. In contrast, rivals like Solana have recorded 37% while Binance has grown over 50%. On a six on a sixty day scale, XRP's performance crashes to a mere five percent, 
gain while its counterparts maintain significant double-digit percentage growth. This trend has been frustrating for, to XRP holders. Nevertheless, Mr. Hubbard pointed out that history indicates fortunes can swiftly reverse with this single development. He cited potential developments that could impact the XRP XRP that could impact XRP, such as the Ripple SEC lawsuit settlement or an exchange traded fund ETF tracking the asset. So these are two things that could happen like that and totally reverse the price. So it might not be seen when we look at the charts. But we're going to go and take a closer look here in a second. But this stuff can flip the price out of nowhere. And that's what we were expecting to see some light come out of all this darkness that's surrounding the XRP price and the lawsuit for that. Hubbard believes those expressing discontent may soon regret selling XRP at today's price once positive news emerges. 100% agree right there. Crypto author thinks otherwise. In response to Hubbard's insight, Mekros expressed heightened enthusiasm for XRP and its ecosystem. Here it is, a quote, unquote. Here I am, more excited than ever for XRP and the Ledger XRPL ecosystem, he remarked. Um, so here he is, Mr. Hubbard. I'm witnessing an overwhelming wave of pessimism in the XRP community with cries of XRP is dead. Yet history shows fortune can quickly shift with just one positive development, such as a settlement or an ETF. Suddenly, those who are complaining now will be the ones. And here I am. Here's Panos. And here I am, more excited than ever for XRP and the XRP Ledger ecosystem. DeFi and features such as AMM lending and a sidechain ecosystem with EVM sidechain. So we recently covered this, you guys, in a previous video about the EVM sidechain. XAHAU and is more positive and is the, the positive development projects should look for, not settlement or ETFs, good project, useful, useful apps. Furthermore, Makerus highlighted the foundation of his heightened enthusiasm for XRP. He emphasized that DeFi based developments are set to take center stage in the XRP ecosystem, bringing various features never seen before. In particular, he cited features like automated market maker. So we also talked about this automated market maker lending in a sidechain ecosystem with EVM and XAHAU. According to him, these features hold more significance than settlements or ETFs for XRP. So, you know, there's no really way to tell which one would have more effect on the price. But right now, everyone's into development. Okay, with that, without a sidechain chain. XRP is also it's another one of the reasons why people are not choosing XRP, but that is also in development. Macross contended that the focus should be fostering, should be on fostering good projects, developing useful applications, and cultivating an active user base rather than solely relying on legal sediments or ETF listings to propel XRP's growth and price appreciation. So, you know, with all this being said, these are all good things, you know, but shouldn't just focus on one thing. I agree. But, you know, just keeping in mind all this stuff when you're coming to conclusions that just because the price is down, let's take a look at Bitcoin. But here we are on the Bitcoin chart, on the weekly chart. And we just want to cover real quick the sediment of Bitcoin right around this area here. So we're going to highlight this area because this is this was the accumulation for Bitcoin right here. So right in the green zone, we had our liquidation spring down here. But this is when the FTX happened here. We had ba several banking crises here. Okay, so let's zoom in just a little bit here. I just want to give an idea, you know, or not an idea, but show anybody that's new or that has lost faith in the project. You know, you shouldn't be hindered by things like this. This is more time to accumulate. And our perspective, you know, may not match yours, but this is generally how it works. So FTX, boom, we were already in a horrendous downtrend for the crypto winter when all the negative things that you think could happen to crypto already happened and they continue to happen. But something happened after the FTX crash right here. Where did this come from? There was no positive. There was no positive sediment or anything like that that was happening. This just happened out of nowhere. I know because we caught it right around right around here and we actually told the people in our group, everyone in our group, that, hey, sediment sucks right now. 
there's a good chance that this is going to go up. And we actually had we actually had a descending channel. So this is our setup right here on a large time scale. This is what we've been trading based off the of Wyckoff method, but not going to go into detail on that. But we are going to cover is it right here. We had horrible, this was horrible sediment, and we sprung up out of that, and nothing really changed, okay? So also, right here, let's take a look at the daily. Here we are, a little bit closer look on the daily. You can still see, you can still see our pattern here. For those of you that are new, we're just zooming in, so we're basically putting this under the microscope. Okay, so sediment was horrible here, and we actually caught this break right here. This line is a little bit off, but this was our confirmation to our trend right here not going to really cover a whole lot of technicals but we bolstered up out of there from what negative horrible sediment ftx had just crashed over here and then also as we were climbing higher we had three different banking crises and that sent us lower we'd never closed in this gap but look at what happened we continued to move up out of the negative sediment so what people are putting out what are what the people are putting out what the market makers are putting out in the media and what happens in price often is directly divergent, so the opposite. So we climbed up out of this during the midst of the most horrible sediment that you could imagine for the crypto market and Bitcoin. So we're expecting to see something similar over here for XRP. Here we are on the weekly chart for XRP. So just overall, just want to go back over here. Over here, let's go to the daily, and we're going to take a look at what happened when we got the okay for retail. Okay, so this happened. There weren't any signs. There were no signs, technically, that this was gonna happen. There was nothing, ha there was, we knew that, that there were, the case was still pending and we got a victory. It was not even a half victory if you consider the influence that retail has opposed to institutions. So this was this bol bolstered up just on the retail victory, and we saw the sell off because institutions weren't clear. So and they're still not clear. But if this is going to happen from retail, again, no signs, and then we get a god candle out of here. Okay, so here we are. Let's fast forward over to today. It's not looking anything really too special. Let's pull out. Here we have our markup and our daily trade position. So we do have an inverse head and shoulders down here. We have broken up. We've retested this neckline several times, but this price action right here is just, it's really hard to make anything of it. So let's go into the four hours, see if we can see anything. We, main point we wanted to get across is there's not really anything. I mean, actually this kind of looks bearish, like we could have a double like we have a double top right here. Okay, so what we are waiting for is for price to go down to accumulate more and continue to accumulate more as the sediment gets worse. Hopefully it continues to get worse. So when we continue to see the price come down, we're expecting they're gonna save the best for last and Ripple's gonna come out with a W with a win towards either the middle or the end of this bull market could be tomorrow so anyways you guys that's going to do it on this one just wanted to cover this and relate this over here to bitcoin how we took off and just go over the sediment you know how horrible it is for xrp right now and how divergent these things can be when it comes to how the market participants react to this stuff and i'm not talking about retail because if if the market moved on retail then XRP would be at a penny right now because everyone's in their emotions. But it's really important and it's extremely important, crucial that you don't get into your feelings about this stuff and that you're patient. Also, diversify. You know, if you're just if you're just holding XRP, you're yeah, you're you're probably you're probably seeing all these other coins and stuff like that go up that you wish that you had got into. Well, there's good news to that too. And we are covering those inside of the group, you guys. So make sure to come over to Market Misfits Academy. It's a private group. You're going to see a page and a private group. Come over to Market Misfits. We're dropping projects that are still really low right now. So it's not too late to get in if you feel like you're missing out and you're just holding XRP. 
come on over to Market Misfits Academy. We are dropping the projects that are still low on the radar that still have high potential. So a lot of these altcoins have not moved because we have seen Bitcoin take off out of nowhere, you know, and so it's left a lot of altcoins behind. And right now we are in a bit of co consolidation on Bitcoin. So there's potential for altcoins to let's take a quick look at the at the altcoin market. So this is all the altcoins minus the top 10. Okay, so we are reaching a resistance right here on the altcoin market. We did shoot through this gap that we were looking at right here. The next place we're looking to break is 359 billion for the top for the altcoin market, excluding the top 10. So this is showing all the medium small caps and without the without the top 10 influencing this because you know this is this is the majority of the crypto market. But anyways, you guys, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure to make it over to Market Misfits. Drop a comment. Send us a message if you have any questions. And we will see y'all on the next one. See ya.